Yeah, but it's I don't think it'll come here. We've got a nice fire going. It's like gray. Can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. <coughs> Back to Bitebridge border post. Apparently, the new border post is up and running on the Zimbabwean side. So, we will experience that for the first time and see if it's going to be a massive improvement. We're hoping it is. Last time it took us two hours to get through. So, looking forward to the new Zimbabwe Bitebridge border post. We like to overnight at Jakanaka on the way to the border to split the trip up. And of course, Jaganaka is one of our favorite campsites. Under these circumstances, the rooftop tent comes in handy for a quick camp setup and for a quick decamp the next morning. Tips for getting through the border post. To all border posts, actually. Patience, number one. Number two, keep your sense of humor. Yeah, that's, that's it. Zimbabwe border post. New border post at White Bridge. New process. Longer time than the previous crossing. <laughs> Very nice border post, but uh, kind of lack of a system and people respecting queues and that sort of thing, and people jumping to the front and. Quite a frustrating process. So it took us almost three hours this time to get through the Zimbabwe side of the Bridge border post, even though the border post itself is a brand new building, very nice inside, air conditioned, but system issues. The border is a drag, definitely. It's detracts from the fun of the trip but patience and a sense of humor and once you're through the border then the adventure kind of begins there are various ways to get to Gunnari Show you take the easy route that's the town of Chirenzi it's mostly tar road we've decided to take the scenic route of course that's through Nuanetsi Game Reserve and then onto this narrow track it's called gravel the roads are actually okay i don't know if this is a national road or what the case is there's no road signs it's an unnamed road but it's on google maps and it's all dirt road it's relatively stony in some places 
not too bad though, it's quite dry. And we're doing about 60 kilometers an hour, which is quite slow actually, so it, it could very well have been a, a bit quicker going the longer route but on top. But we never go the easy route. We go the interesting route, the exciting route. And sometimes you do that unintentionally by accident. <laughs> pretty good so far. Uh, it's quite narrow but yeah this is definitely more interesting than driving. Hello. Hi how are you? How are you doing? Fine. Good. Are you clean? No. Uh, okay. I We've arrived late after our fiasco at Whitebridge border post. Fortunately, we did phone ahead and the staff are prepared to receive us late. We've just come to the main entrance where there was some confirmation by radio between the ranger and reception. He's given us directions and now we've got to do a river crossing, which he didn't mention. Can't really see how deep it is, so hopefully we do get across this without any incident. My lord. Taking the scenic route here is not 100% recommended because it was quite bumpy and quite slow along some of the way. There's quite a lot of clay, so it's dry now, but you can see where that road's been rutted up a hell of a lot. So if you have to come here in the wet season, that is not an advisable route to take. Go the long way through Rutenga and Chiredzi, that is mostly tar road, and it's probably a little bit quicker but not as interesting. But once you get here, man, this place is beautiful. Chipinda Pools, this campsite is absolutely amazing. It's right on the river's edge. The sun sets over the river. There's beautiful shade, huge trees, lots of hippo in the river right in front of you. And it really gives you the feeling of being out in the bush. The road India's built up a stony causeway that goes across the Runde River and you can do that now at the time that we are doing this because the river is at a level where you can cross over. In the, when the river is at its height of course you, wouldn't, you probably wouldn't be able to turn, you're going to drive further down to, give, to come to a built concrete causeway. So that's quite an interesting experience as well so we had to do that as a nighttime crossing which is quite entertaining, a little bit nerve wracking as well because you can't quite see what the width of the road is and you don't know the depth of the water. So it does get a little bit deep, sort of halfway up the tire at some point. And that is a little bit disconcerting because then you don't know how much deeper it's gonna get. But it is an interesting adventure in any case. It is winter right now. It's surprisingly quite warm. Well, it's actually not surprisingly quite warm. It's quite a low altitude and we are up in the tropics. But it's quite pleasant in comparison to Johannesburg, which is freezing right now. So quite happy to be away from Johannesburg. We do have a campfire going, of course, because we always have a campfire going, because we can't camp without a campfire. And it's really pleasant in, in that respect that the, the weather is nice and warm. Chipinda Pools campsite. Lots of good things to say about this. It's right on the riverfront, so we're right on the Runde River, just 20 meters or so from the edge of the river. The campsite's beautiful, lots of shade, big trees, hippos in the river, lots of crocodiles, a bit of game running around, kudu, impala, some nyala, 
very, very nice. Campsites are quite widely spread apart as well. So you get the feeling of being in the bush and you kind of get the feeling of being alone. You don't feel like you're in a campsite per se. Looking forward to doing a bit more fishing, lots of crocodiles, which is a little bit scary. Big crocodile on the island just across the channel where I was fishing this afternoon. Very, 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 very wow. We are looking forward to exploring more of the park tomorrow. So we're gonna pack up from here at Chipinda Pools relatively early. We never, we never leave at the crack of dawn. We're not crack of dawn people. We're gonna pack up and get going on to our next destination, which is Chilonjo Cliffs. Very much looking forward to that as well. And along the way, it's about an hour's drive. It's about 40 kilometers. It takes probably a couple of hours because we're gonna take our time, enjoy the sights, enjoy the wildlife. A new bridge or build causeway was built in 2019. We've heard a lot about it. So we're definitely gonna do a bit of a side track and go see that. And as I mentioned earlier, when the river's too high, you can't go across the stony causeway weir type setup that's closer or direct route from the gate. You've got to drive down to the concrete causeway. So we're gonna go check that out tomorrow as well and then continue on our way to Chilojo Cliff. Driving up from the causeway is very steep. It's quite a significant incline. Some of the tighter corners have been concreted so that you get some traction. Having driven it now, I would definitely recommend that you have a four x four or a four wheel drive. I think with a two wheel drive here, you could start slipping on the not concreted areas, so the, the dirt road areas, and that could start damaging the road. And certainly if you've got a trailer or a caravan, then it, it needs to be a, a, an off-road one. But it is a beautiful drive. It's really wonderful scenes of the Runde River. And it's certainly worth just going to see the causeway. Of course, if the water's high, you would have to go this way because the rocky causeway that leads directly from the gate to reception will be flooded. It'll be too high to cross normally. It's yeah. massive, right? Eh? Yeah.
Yeah. Um, okay, go faster than this. Hello? Its leg was in the air. It's not chilled. It's just un it's uncomfortable. Okay, stop. Chill audio clips, what a magnificent sight. Got the fire going. You can see the elephant. Okay. It's not coming here though, right? It's doing what it's doing. Look, I'm sure it won't come here. We've got the car closed, right? We should be okay. Yeah, but it's, I don't think it'll come here. We've got a nice fire going. It's like bread. You hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. See the bushes moving, but I can't see the elephant. You see? Good. You see it, Mala? It's actually two. No. Oh, right. Oh, it's a small elephant. It's uh, not an adult. Okay. Not quite an adult. The adults are so. Cute. Looks like a adolescent. moving off but there's something to the left yeah. so there's a herd of elephants here basically right let's go back to the fire <laughs> Something definitely to note here is that the tracks are quite narrow. The roads are windy and like on this road we're on now that goes from Chilojo Cliffs to the confluence of the Runde and Save River is through a couple of stream beds and river beds and some rocky places and it does wind quite a bit, it's a little bit narrow as well. So it takes you quite a while to get to places. You know, even that's just over 40 kilometers 
from our campsite to the confluence and you would think you could do that in maybe an hour or an hour and a half or something if you didn't really stop um, it's not the case um, on average you're doing maybe 20 kilometers an hour because it's quite slow going in places you definitely need sensible clearance here and i think a 4x4 to get through many of those rocky river crossings some of them are a little bit sandy but i, I definitely recommend a 4x4 another thing to look out for the elephants are aggressive almost every encounter we've had with elephants now they have shown us aggression so it is a little bit nerve-wracking sometimes driving through this Mopani woodland because you can't see very far and then suddenly there's an elephant or a group of elephants that, that comes out of nowhere and yeah they have been trumpeting at us in mock charging and it is definitely the rule rather than the exception so there's quite a few incidents where nothing has happened where especially where there's females with calves where they seem to prefer to move off than to challenge but definitely we've been challenged by many elephants so approach the elephants with caution keep your eyes out lots of wildlife lots of impala zebra we've seen some wildebeest which i was not expecting to see lots of elephant of course water buck as you would expect so a lot of wildlife we haven't seen any cats yet but we have seen some paw prints in the riverbed close to the campsite but we haven't seen any clear sightings of any cats or evidence of a kill or anything of that sort this area around Chilodjo cliffs is ideal for wildlife viewing there's a set of floodplains of course around the Runde river and this is where a lot of the grazing animals are and there's a, a much higher concentration of animals here than in the other places that we've seen also of course the wildlife is more visible so there's herds of impala we've seen zebra we've seen wildebeest we've seen water buck we've seen lots of elephants of course gonarejo place of elephants and we've seen some wild dog as well which is quite rare we don't often see wild dog and to see it here in gonarejo that's really nice the animals are very skittish the elephants are aggressive speaking of which there is one in front of us right now and one to the left yeah that one's shaking at us okay and it's going on its way which is nice <laughs> it's gonna shake its head again <laughs> So we had to stop there because elephant was walking across the road but what we found generally is that the thing to do is to drive slowly past these elephants if you approach them at speed then they tend to take off if you sp speed past them then they tend to turn around and chase after the car charge after the car um, if you stop then they tend to face you and, and mock charge and that sort of thing so if you kind of approach them slowly and drive past them slowly they seem to be fairly calm so that seems to be the winning formula and i suppose that's a legacy of the poaching that has occurred here prior to the park being revived or if it's going into reviving the park so i mean that started just recently about five years ago and there's a 20-year agreement with the frankfurt zoological society to try and bring this park to a point where it's self-sustaining and they're doing a really good job so far they've done a lot of work on the roads for example still a lot of work to do on in many of the roads but certainly these roads around Chilodjo cliffs and the and the main routes they've done quite a lot of work and it's become traversable what are you pointing at the elephant and the cub um, calf and there's more elephant and we're turning slightly towards them so let's hope are there we... any on the left because i'm a bit vulnerable look see anything on the left but definitely on the right okay there no okay there's one right here this is a like a teenager oh there's a calf on the other side two calves on the other side yeah go 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 okay this no 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 don't do that that is the only thing to do there my love <laughs> that thing was gonna come for us 
So yeah, that was a bit of a situation there because there was a set of calves on one side of the road and then a set of adults on the other side of the road. And you know, that's you don't want to get caught between a set of adults, female elephants and calves. So accelerator. Surprisingly, some of these animals are a little bit paler than we're used to seeing. And jackal, for example, here are seem a bit paler than what we normally see. The water buck as well are very pale. But if that's endemic to the area, or if I just think that they're pale, could be the case. <laughs> Earlier we were looking at some pale water buck in the background when we realized that there were some much more interesting wild dogs in the foreground. The wild dogs were a bit skittish as well. As soon as we stopped, they got up from their shady spot and they went to another shady spot. Not far away, but you know, they weren't happy with us looking at them from so close by. That's what we came for. <laughs> like how inconsiderate <laughs> of the animals. Kunarejo is part of the Greater Limpopo Conservancy area and hopefully at some time in the future this and the Mozambican side and the Kruger Park and the conservancies around those areas will all be part of one large Greater Limpopo Transfrontier Park. And I think that will be a really wonderful thing. It will be, if it all comes together, an area that is approximately 100,000 square kilometers. And that's a really large. That's about a quarter of the size of Zimbabwe. And it will probably be one of the largest such conservancy uh, corridors um, on the planet. Okay, but let's see what's going on outside, right? Was hoping to wake up to the sound of lions in the night, if I wake up at all. But what I'm actually waking up to is the sound of the howling wind. It's surprising. It's been 
Yeah, we've had a few breezes and stuff, but tonight the wind is howling. We almost lost a chair just now, which blew up against the tent. So quickly unzipped and found that there was a chair knocking against the tent, making a bit of a racket. So managed to rescue a chair from the wind. But uh, other than that, it's quite peaceful, except the wind is howling. We're on our way to Nyawasikana. That's our next camping stop. The road's pretty good. It's actually quite flat, very lightly sandy, but it's quite easy going. We did a quick stop at Chinguli campsite to get some wood, and we were able to pay in cash for that $10 for two bundles of wood altogether. And uh, the camp attendant said it's about an hour's drive to Nyawasikana, but I doubt it's an hour's drive from our experience so far in the park. It's probably going to be more like three hours. But let's see how it goes. But it's a beautiful drive through the Mopani forest. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of animals because it's quite thick. We've seen some kudu and lots of elephant dung. But it is quite thick. And we are traveling quite a distance away from the major river system at this time. Looking forward to Nyawasikana and looking forward to a bit of fishing again on the river because we are allowed to fish there. Chinguli Camp looks really nice. I think if we come back to Gonarejo, we're definitely going to stay there. Nice bathrooms, nice setup. It's on the a rocky part of the river and you can fish there for tiger fish, bream amongst others. So it looks like a nice place to come back to when we come back to Gonarejo. So at reception, we're informed that it's best to use the boundary route to get to Nyawasikana because the roads that are central in the park are still being refurbed and rebuilt and stuff and so apparently it's quite slow going there so we are taking the boundary road otherwise you know we would have preferred to stick a bit closer to the river um, I expect there's more wildlife there so obviously we've got the vehicle to do it we can go anywhere with this car but if they've advised us that that's not the best route, then we're going to take their advice. They know the park very well, and I'm sure they traverse those roads all the time. So Nyawasikana is in the southern section of the park. The northern section is where the Runde and Save rivers flow, and those are the major, two major rivers. And that's pretty much where I think most people would want to go and hang out and stuff. Obviously, we want to enjoy more of the park and see the southern sections as well and we're going to drive back through Sango border post via Mozambique and then through Papuri so that's again another reason to go this way there's more to see but it's also our route back to South Africa so it's going to be interesting the river there is a smaller river it's the Mwenezi river and I hope that there is water flow when we get there in order to do some fishing but I suppose we'll know when we arrive. So we stopped at gate Bravo 6. There were a couple of rangers there and they kind of signed us in or made a record of us coming in at that gate. They didn't seem to know exactly where Nyawasikana campsite is, but it is near Mabalauta. And once we had established that, then they gave us some directions but they didn't seem to quite know where the campsite is. Anyway, they said when we get to the next gate, which is Bravo 7, then we'll get some instructions to get to the campsite. So that's about a 32 kilometer distance, which we're hoping to cover in less than an hour because the road's pretty good. We've driven through two main stops, main gates, they seem like, with booms and rangers there manning those posts and they've taken our details, recorded our details. The last one at Bravo 7, they radioed through to reception um, as well as the ones previous to that just to confirm that we are where we are supposed to be and I suppose that we are who we say we are. Which is good, it's nice to see that there's some formal control and you know hopefully that's something that will discourage, reduce, maybe you know with uh, all the other efforts eliminate poaching so it's, it's good to see that the guys are very formal they you know they, they know what they're about and um, yeah it's quite encouraging
You know, I was really worried, but it's actually pretty cool, eh? Camp set up, fire going, sunset in the background, a big herd of buffalo that's come down to the water a fair way upstream. This is pretty much the perfect wilderness camp setting for us. Last evening in Gunarejo, spending it at Nyawasikana. It's been a nice day out. Did some fishing, caught zero fish, <laughs> but fishing is always fun and relaxing. And we've had a great dinner today. My significant other made us a wonderful spaghetti bolognese type dinner. It's fantastic. And now we're just chilling in front of the fire, waiting for the logs to burn away. And then we're gonna head to bed, try and get up a little bit early tomorrow morning. We've got a long drive tomorrow. Basically out of Gonarejo through Sango Border Post, Mozambique, and then across the Limpopo and to Pafuri. So tomorrow's destination is Pafuri, and then from there we head back to Joburg. Had a reasonably early start today for us and we're now heading out of the park we're heading through to Sangor border post the roads pretty good actually we've taken a road along the railway line there's a, a large railway line that runs through the park and it's actually in very good condition very easy to drive on quite smooth one or two small areas where there is a bit of clay but otherwise it's very nice road that's built with calcrete so we're making good time and if there are no mishaps along the way and unfortunately if there are no interesting sightings along the way then we should make it in good time. At the right time of year you can drive straight down this road and cross over the Mpopo and into Pafuri. However the river is still flowing quite strongly right now so we've got a catch a ferry across the river which is a bit further downstream so it's a bit of a longer drive but I think going on the ferry is also an interesting experience or will be an interesting experience so also looking forward to that morning morning hi uh, how are you
Thank you. Stay well. Yeah, it's all camping stuff. Morning, morning, morning. Hi, how are you? How are you? Thank you. Driving to the border posts was relatively quick. The Zimbabwean site was very friendly, very efficient, and that actually went really well. There was very little delay there, if any. They did check the car, so customs did check the car, which is fine, which is, I think, quite normal. And yeah, that, that process was fine. No issues with that. We drove across the Mozambican border. Yeah, the Mozambican side, they were very formal, and we went through the various formalities. The person issuing the temporary import permit for the car had to be called. He wasn't in the border post, but you know, it's Saturday morning, so you know, maybe that's part of it. But he came around, we had to pay 750 metikash for the temporary import permit, which they converted to be 200 rand, which is a rather strong conversion rate. But anyway, that's what they said and that's what we paid. The only small delay we had was getting into the border post, a set of booms and a set of uh, soldiers there who wanted a cold drink. So it took a bit of time to kind of relay backwards and forwards in broken English and Portuguese that there are no cold drinks in the car. Um, so that was kind of the only significant delay we had and I suppose waiting for the guy with the TIP. So straight out the border post, it's a tar road, very nice tar road, signposted, proper road markings. The road itself is in very good condition. I feel a bit anxious driving here in Mozambique, it's the first time and you know, I've only ever heard bad things about police and corruption and you know, forced bribery situations, that sort of thing. So I do feel a bit anxious driving here uh, on this tar road. The speed limit does fluctuate quite a bit. You know, it goes from 100 to 80 to 60 where there's a, any little T-junction coming onto the road. And so you're continuously dropping to 60 kilometers an hour. And then sometimes there isn't a speed restriction cancellation side on the other side so you're not sure if you're supposed to keep driving at 60 k's an hour but uh, the road itself is very good we haven't encountered many other cars yet but yeah, i do feel a, a little bit of um, anxiety because it's, it's unfamiliar and i think i've just heard a lot of uh, bad stories so let's see how it goes from Mapai, one has to turn off the tar road onto this dirt road, which we're traveling on now. And the road's actually in pretty decent condition as far as dirt roads go. We are quite comfortably doing about 80 kilometers an hour. Next destination is the ferry. According to Google Maps, it says, take the ferry, which sounds very formal. I don't know how formal this ferry is gonna be, but we should know soon enough. Okay, so we're just approaching the river now. There's a couple of little signs that indicate where to go. There's a little settlement and there's a couple of signs that say Pafuri this way. So it's a bit of a basic track at this point. And there's a couple of people here at the river. We can see a couple of cars actually that have come over from South Africa. Somebody's actually going over the river right now. So it's a little bumpy track, the last kilometer or so, or two maybe, to get to the actual river side itself. Right, time to head over the river. So now we've got to load the car onto the barge, get to the other side, and then get out 
Apparently, it's relatively compact sand on the other side, so we don't have to worry too much about deflating the tires. So that's on the advice of the guys that are running the barge. So we'll take the advice, and hopefully it's the right advice. But yes, looking forward to doing a crossing of the mighty Limpopo. Very comforting that they are pitching water out of the bottom of the thing. <laughs> like that's very... Yes, enjoy your trip.
right. And use that. Well, this is an interesting situation. We got to the border post, Bafuri border post on the Mozambican side, and they said we were late. We have no means of confirming exactly what the time is for the border post because we don't have data. Uh, well, there's no signal, cell phone signal and no data signal. So they started talking about, you know, cool drinks and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, we decided okay we're just gonna then turn around and uh, find a place to camp there is a place called Dumela safaris which is just 12 kilometers from the border post so we're gonna see if we can arrange a spot to camp overnight and then we'll go back to the border in the morning Had a good sleep last night, sort of. There was a bit of noise in the campsite. <laughs> but we had a decent sleep, got up. Felt good after a nice hot shower as well. Nice campsite, really like it. We're definitely gonna go back there and uh, then hopefully do a proper review of the campsite as well. But uh, really beautiful, beautiful little lagoon there, natural lagoon, lots of fish. You can see the bream on the surface in the morning and apparently some good tiger fishing there too. So definitely gonna go back there when it's a bit warmer, do some fishing. Now we're on our way to the border or back to Pafuri border post where we were about 20 minutes late yesterday. So we're quite early today, I think. And um, I suppose the only thing that might be a concern right now is that our TIP says one day. It's valid for 30 days, but it does say that we would be in the country for one day and uh, it's been more, well, theoretically it hasn't been more than one day yet, but it is the next calendar day today. So let's see how that goes. Otherwise it should be, I hope, relatively smooth sailing, and we should be back in South Africa in a couple of hours, 
And then we've got a long drive to Joburg. Just that guy also slammed that thing, eh? <laughs> he also decided today he doesn't want no trouble. He's like, eh. How do you say goodbye? Uh, adeus. That's what I know. Ciao! Pick up, eh? Over here. So I got through the Mozambique border post relatively easily, went to immigration, passport was stamped fairly quickly, they obviously checked the documents and so on, went to the customs side, they checked our documents, asked to search the vehicle, which was pretty much a cursory search, open the door, what's that, okay, what's that, okay, you know, not a thorough search and having to take stuff out. They were quite leisurely, but no issues, I think it took all of about 15 maybe 20 minutes. It does help to speak and understand a bit of Portuguese on the Mozambican side, which I can speak and understand a bit of Portuguese. Not a lot of English spoken there, so in quite a few instances we're dealing with officials that don't speak English, but there are some officials that do speak English as well that we came across at both border posts going in and coming out, but it certainly helps to, to have a bit of Portuguese. So I would recommend that. Have your tourist guide of fr Portuguese phrases for the border post. Morning, morning. Hello, how are you? Oh, good, how are you? I'm fine. Great. Where must we park? Must Next we park time, here? Ne, yeah. when you're coming to this side, yes. you park to that shadow. Oh, okay. Then you enter here, you stamp your passport. Ah. Then they'll come and search you, then you proceed. Okay. When you're coming from this side, going to Mozambique, yeah. you park here. Ah. Then you enter the other part because okay. you're already here. <laughs> but I'm telling you for the future. Well, for I future. must learn. Yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> Through the South African border post, five minutes flat, very quick. We were the only vehicle there, and uh, yeah, we're on our way. So from here, it's the long drive back to Joburg. Once you're through the South African border, then you've just got to drive through the Kruger Park to the Pafuri Gate, the Kruger Park Pafuri Gate, which we did. Got our exit permit and drove out. Fairly straightforward procedure. So altogether it's been a pretty amazing trip. Gonare Joe was great, was fantastic, loved it. Driving back and getting the ferry over the Lumpopo was an interesting experience as well. The road from there to the border post, difficult, slow going, probably 30 average kilometers per hour, on average 30 kilometers per hour. Sometimes quicker, sometimes much slower. Sometimes very bumpy, sometimes very sharp turns, a few villages along the way, goats, etc. Um, so, yeah, it was an interesting trip as well. Stopping at Zumela Wilderness Safaris, that was nice. That was, you know, obviously unplanned. We had to turn back from the border post. Uh, fortunately, they had a spot for us to camp. Beautiful place, we'll definitely go back there. I think if you are driving to Gonarejo and you're coming through Pafuri border post, then I definitely recommend that you stop over there as a, a midway stop between the border posts or else you're going to find yourself rushing to get from the one border post to the next border post and doing the crossing on the ferry and all that sort of stuff. Of course, if the Limpopo is low and you can drive across the riverbed, then you're going to save quite a bit of time between the Mozambican border posts. But if you have to catch the ferry, I definitely recommend that you stop over Dumelda Wilderness Safaris, very nice spot to camp and there's some great fishing there as well. The Gonare Joe trip and experience was wonderful. Glad we could do it in the winter time, both because it's then easier to see animals around the various water spots and around the rivers, particularly the Runde River. And in addition to that, it was nice and warm in comparison to Johannesburg in the winter. And I can imagine that going there in the summer, it must be very hot. You know, that's the other side of going there in the summer or the disadvantage and you may see less animals as well if it's rained. So definitely the right time of year to go and it was a great experience. I definitely recommend it. Guanarejo has been really wonderful. Um, very wild, 
great feeling wilderness in all the campsites that we've been. Georgia Cliffs, particularly spectacular. I 100% recommend that for anybody that wants to come through Junkwana Rejo. And also around Georgia Cliffs, the floodplains of the Runde River as well. Lots of wildlife, lots of elephants, aggressive elephants. Lion sounds in the night, but we didn't see any lions. We saw a wild dog, which I was really happy about, and my significant other was very excited about too. And lots of different types of antelope. It's been a very nice experience. The rivers are beautiful as well. Nice to be in this warm place in the midst of winter when Joburg is freezing cold, which is what we're going to go back to. But beautiful. Gonarijo, five stars. And um, I think it's only going to get better with all the effort that's going into improving the park and making it self-sustainable. And I would love to come back here in a few years' time and see it when it's gone to that next level as well. But it's a beautiful park and I highly recommend it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We really enjoyed going out of show. And I hope it inspires you to go and experience it as well. This is a bit of a longer episode as per some of the feedback that we've gotten from you guys out there. I hope you liked that. Leave a comment below, give us some feedback. It's always great to hear back from you guys. Look out as well for upcoming reviews on the three campsites that we stayed at. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. If you want to make a contribution to the channel, hit the buy me a coffee link below, 100% voluntary. And until the next adventure, go everywhere, see everything, have a great time.